Welcome to the Insider's Look at Security and Compliance podcast, brought to you by Agile. I'm Evan Schumann. For at least the next several years, hybrid cloud environments are going to be the norm for Fortune 500 companies. And as long as companies are having to maintain both on-premise and cloud operations, they're going to suffer through an especially complicated compliance dance. The best examples of these struggles comes from cloud infrastructure as a service, as well as identity and access management. For this to work, CISOs and IT leaders need to shift their cost justification thinking from a return on investment and ROI mode to one closer to a traditional risk assessment. In other words, think not of what this investment will immediately do for you, but what it will do to you if, and make that when, an incident happens. To figure this all out today, we have with us Lawrence Wolf, a veteran compliance guru who has been in the industry for more than 30 years. Today, he is managing partner for Agile. Larry, what do you see today as the biggest CISO IAM confusion? Just to, I guess, set a little bit of context here. In, in the past 15 plus years, my focus around IAM has been significant and uh, all the way back to when it, it really kind of started. And it really started on the directory side, of, you know, at an infrastructure level and then became more focused around provisioning, deprovisioning, and then as SOX came about and additional regulatory compliance mandates, companies had to start figuring out how they deal with things like who has access to what, how all those things are managed. And, and the, the, the change in the market over time has been difficult in some ways because originally this was all focused around infrastructure and that's the IT organization. Well, the IT organization over the years has always been really justification annually on a budget around buying technology and it's justified on ROI. Well, the changes in the marketplace as it relates to things like compliance and risk, i.e. SOC and additional things like GDPR and other compliance mandates that continue to be applied to try and secure and manage the uh, enterprise has created this dynamic of shifting from more of an ROI perspective to an overall uh, risk perspective as it relates to IAM. What are you seeing as the most important shift in thinking that IT organizations must embrace when they get started or reboot their IAM program? The focus around the technology, what I like to describe is that how many programs or projects have you run in the past that are focused enterprise-wide that touches every human in the organization? And when you start to think in those perspectives, Combined with, you start thinking of these are programs and they're much more than actual just technology implementation. They're focused around the change in the enterprise, which is really people, process, data, and technology. And the other part of it is it's transformational, which means that it's not an implementation of product, but it's an overall change process over time that includes products, products being plural. There are many different vendors out there, product vendors that have different technologies, but there really is no vendor that provides all the services and aspects of identity and access management. So with that being said, that change more towards a compliance and risk perspective has created an environment where you have to think of things differently. You have to start asking your, yourself questions like, What's the current state and what's the maturity on the current state of my risk framework and my posture? And then where do I make those investments? And how do those align with the business? And when you start thinking that way, you start realizing you really need a strategy to do that. And if you're not starting with a strategy, you're starting with thinking you need a product and, and going out and buying and looking at products or talking to product vendors, you start to kind of position yourself in a way that you're only focusing on some specific technology areas. If you elevate it and look at it from an overall strategy perspective, I like to say you set your compass before you get in the boat and you actually are setting where you're going and it's a multi-year program, then you can start to analyze things in a different way. And then if you add to that, what's my maturity around my risk? And where do I want to make those investments? In some areas, maybe you don't want to make the investment, but you want to make sure 
your investments are all in the right right areas. So a lot of companies will start to try to use a framework like NIST or other security frameworks. The problem with some of those frameworks is they're all-encompassing, they're very complex, and the amount of investment and the amount of, of organizational uh, requirements to make those things work, those frameworks work, is, is, is too much and it's too difficult. So you have to back up and say, where do I need to spend my money and where are my issues around security as well as my compliance posture? That change has really caused a lot of CISOs to think of and the organizations to think of IAM differently. Now, you've spoken about the need to back off an ROI approach, but isn't it also a matter of rethinking ROI? For example, you have spoken at times about different benefits. We've talked, you know, the wet signatures and some of the other matters where you've seen different examples of benefits, strategic benefits from the compliance effort, and that that may be a different way of looking at ROI, or at least a more practical way. That's uh, honestly a, a part of a, a strategy that's more than just the actual risk posture and the compliance posture of your organization. That's, that's what that people process data side of the equation, which says that do you have all of your processes specifically mapped in a way that, that, that you know you're most efficient and in many cases doing the minimum necessary, not overly uh, engineering processes and making it more complex than it needs to be. So when you start to look at your risk environment, you start to understand there's some things that maybe you're doing you don't need to do. And in some cases, organizations have been around for many years and they're doing things a certain way and they're not looking at maybe new ways of looking at things. We've seen situations where clients are focused on buying that technology. And then when we do, we, we do a strategy and start to look at the environment, we realize as we map processes, there's things that they're doing that have nothing to do with technology. Example, we had a 100-year-old company. They were under the belief that they had to always get wet signatures. That process took days and days to onboard people, uh, not realizing that they, they could do all of that in an electronic way, but they were looking at it that this is the way we've always done it. We have to do it this way. And the answer was, that's what legal said. And when you go talk to legal, legal said, no, don't necessarily have to do it that way. You can actually use electronic signatures and accelerate this. And that's just one example of many in regards to looking at the equation as it relates to a technology play and not necessarily a holistic play around people, process data, and technology. But isn't there also a visibility issue that a lot of times as these companies do a robust look at their compliance and security and how to make it all work, that they tend to find connections between the business under the process category of ways to do things better so they have more visibility into their systems. Isn't that also another part of rethinking ROI? It is. It's also another way of rethinking the whole program because if the IT organization is tagged with the problem, many times they're not as connected or as aligned with the business which, which causes them to focus on the technology and not the business and not the change in the organization, the dynamics of the organization, and the processes that are applied within the organization. Companies that have been around for years many times can focus on the process and make some significant gain in what they're doing organizationally. One element of that that specifically relates to authentication is better communication to accelerate the onboarding process, both onboarding process, which is obviously in the initial step, and then a routine authentication. How does that play into it in terms of better customer relations or just ease of operation? These are the kinds of things that really do point to internal ROI that don't have as much or a significant play as it relates to the business driving of additional business as well as elevation of brand and expansion of business, those kinds of things. The dynamics of identity and access management is changing uh, very rapidly. And it's a combination of the movement to the cloud with the movement to the customer environment external to the internal enterprise. And that external movement to the client and the partners and the other outside entities that are business partners puts you in a situation where, one, you have to think of it differently 
as it relates to how you treat it because it can actually expand your business. But you also are now extending your environment external combined with, in many cases, to the cloud as well. And both of those things, you have to think through how you're handling that from a security and compliance perspective. Uh, many times clients are moving to the cloud. They're not realizing that they're really not as compliant as they think they are. And as they start to move to the cloud, they realize they need to go back and reassess their compliance and how they're complying to certain things, combined with not making any assumptions that because you're in the cloud, you're safer. And in some cases, you may not be as safe. And the reason is not so much that it's in the cloud, but these cloud vendors turn on products sometimes weekly. And if they're turning on products within a cloud environment that you're not fully aware of how it affects your compliance posture and model, you're going to be out of compliance maybe within a few months after you actually move to the cloud. So you have to think through the compliance and security in a different way, not only external to your organization, but also the idea that someone else as a platform where they're turning on products that could affect you in some way that you're not you're not thinking through. So you have to understand what that is. The other factor in rethinking the ROI is about risk exposure, which is do you think that most CFOs, most enterprise Fortune 1000 CFOs are properly giving credence to what kind of exposure they've got, both in fines, in customer relations, in downtime, in remediation, all of those costs that'll be associated with any kind of an incident that kicks in. There's kind of two parts to that statement. One is a CFO maybe not applying the, the, the financial kind of model to that, that risk economics equation. And the other, the other part of that is most of us don't know. It, it doesn't matter how many years you've been in the industry, you're uncertain what some of these breaches or compliance issues are going to do to you until it happens. So you have to try to speculate from previous history of incidents that happen. And we've seen many of those where organizations have spent millions and millions of dollars in an IAM program to try to lock everything down correctly, understand who has access to what, understand things like privileged access users, how to manage those, contractors, external, internal and still have been breached and their compliance mandates have been compromised. That's because we don't always know where it's coming from. The idea that you're going to spend X amount of money is very difficult to examine and understand until something happens. And when that happens, you start to realize that the significance of that is much more than you anticipated. And the fallout on the back end, the systemic fallout, that affects your organization may cause you in the future to spend more than you need to because of the fear that, that gets ensued within the organization and the outside entities that are analyzing you after those types of breaches or compliance material weaknesses have occurred. To read more about Larry's identity strategy tips, go to agile.com slash IAM. That was E-D-G-I-L-E dot com slash IAM for the insider look at security and compliance podcast brought to you by Agile. I'm Evan Schumann. Have a secure and compliant week. 